In this video, we'll be talking about the dangers associated with uh, the swimming pool outlets, which um, on the diagram you can see here and here a couple of outlets. Sometimes they're called drains or sometimes they're called sumps and they're usually situated at the bottom of the pool. If it's a, a pool with a deep end, they'll usually be up the um, up the deep, uh, at the deep end on, on the floor and water is uh, drawn drawn through and goes then into the plant room via the suction created by the circulation pumps so all this area in red is under suction um, and it can be a significant amount of suction because these circulation pumps in um, in plant rooms can be fairly powerful. Um, you can be talking on um, a circulation pumps of that sort of size. You could be talking, you know, 10, 10 horsepower per pump, which is a, a significant amount of uh, of, of power, really. Um, and what can happen is if we go back to the to the diagram imagine the sort of suction that can be potentially generated at these at these uh, at these sumps if you've got a a 10 horsepower pump here and a 10 horsepower pump there um, it can be the suction generated can be so powerful that it can actually trap people uh, onto the sump outlet onto the grill if uh, if they happen to cover it with a section of their a section of their body so you can see on this image here that this young lad has, has, has swum down to a to a sump outlet, covered it with his torso, and the moment that he created that seal around that sump outlet, he created a vacuum because the the pumps have got then they're not drawing water through anymore. So if you if you look at this image here, if somebody was to cover up that that outlet, then the pumps are going to continue to um, operate, but they've got nothing. They've got they can't draw water through. So whatever it is that's going to be causing the blockage is going to be exposed to the full suction power of the um, of the circulation system. So the full suction power of these powerful pumps is going to be um, uh, drawing on whatever it is that's causing the blockage. Uh, of the sump here. Now there have been cases of people um, being disemboweled by the suction that is generated from the sumps, um, such as the amount of suction that is generated there. So there are some fairly basic design principles that reduce or in some cases completely eliminate the risk. Um, what you've got to do is make sure that your sumps don't look like this one in the in the picture because the problem here is there's only one of them. Uh, what you'll see in most modern swimming pools is something more like that where there's uh, where there's two or more on this one. On the diagram, there's uh, there's two sumps, but um, it's two sumps here, but on, on, on this image, there's uh, there's a sump there, another one there, another one there. So if somebody was happened to be able to cover one, then the suction just simply transfers to sump one and sump two, and a vacuum is not formed because the circulation pumps are still able to draw water through the two remaining open outlets. Um, and modern day pool, pools that are built um, to modern building um, regulations and, and specifications, they will have already this design principle 
included in the plans but some pools that are significantly older um, you could end up with a situation like this this is this is potentially extremely hazardous because there's only one sump plus the fact that the sump looks like it's fairly flush with the bottom of the pool and it only looks to me to be about maybe 50 centimeters by 50 centimeters where the other sumps were much larger um, which again makes it more difficult to be able to form a seal around the sump um, they're also if, if you've got one uh, if you've got multiple sump outlets they need to be at least uh, two meters uh, two meters apart as well um, so having more than one is a is a key um, control measure that reduces the risk having the sumps uh, the grill covering the sumps um, large enough to prevent them being covered is another key design principle and what you might see in some in some instances is this sort of thing where you've got a sump cover here that is um, of such a design that it makes it very difficult to be able to form a form a seal around it because it's sort of bulged outwards it's uh, it's of a, a, a convex shape hazardous outlets sometimes get covered over with something like that that again because of these because of these walls going you know, a tapered sort of side to uh, uh, around the sump out cover allows water to go through but again prevents somebody from being able to form a seal uh, on the system um, so this the, the these design principles are to prevent the risk of uh, something called suction entrap uh, entrapment this is where you get either you know a hair uh, a limb drawn in or, or a, you know a torso drawn in it's also important to keep the sumps in good condition um, this is an example of one that's obviously been allowed to fall into a state of disrepair so you can easily imagine a, a, you know a swimmer getting a, a limb especially if it's a child getting a limb caught in there um, and as I say it's that vacuum that gets created that might make it very very difficult um, for them to able uh, to be able to get free. Uh, another hazard is something called suction entanglements. This is where hair gets drawn in to the outlet, and because of the vortex action of the water, it entwines on the other side um, and can keep the person underwater. Um, so this this might be more of an issue in spa pools where because of the smaller dimensions of a smart a spa pool you might find yourself uh, a swimmer might find himself in close proximity to an outlet now with spa pools it's a little bit different than the swimming pools in that most of the water will be leaving at the surface here so um, over the overflow channel goes down into the balance tank and then from the balance tank through pre-pump strainer pump then it goes through the filter and then heating and back at the base inlets but with a spa pool what you'll have is this uh, this secondary system here to provide the jets of water um, when the bubbles are on now what you've got here is water an outlet here at the base um, leaving and uh, going through this secondary system so that's your water jet and then the inlet there so here the this outlet that they, they tend to look more similar to to that could possibly give rise to suction entanglement where people can get their their hair drawn in so there does need to be some sort of warning given to people using spas that they should tie their hair back and not submerge themselves under the water because if they do so they could 
then be uh, at risk of their hair being drawn into the to the outlet. The, the issue with a lot of spa pools is is they're often located in in settings where there's no supervision. So, for example, a hotel spa pool might not have a lifeguard on duty um, to warn people to take those precautions of, of tying their hair back and um, and not submerging underwater. So it's very important. Um, this is why we cover it in, in the pool plant uh, foundation course. It's very important for people to be aware of the hazards associated with these uh, swimming pool and spa outlets so that a you know, an assessment of the risk can be carried out and uh, the appropriate actions can be put in place following that risk assessment.